Hi guys, it's Daniel here uh, from Conqueror 4x4 Victoria. And what we're gonna talk about in this video is we're gonna talk about setting up the beds in the UEV 440 Platinum. Uh, okay, so let's sort of put ourselves in the picture first. We've probably been on the road four, five, six hours. If you've got children, they've been driving you nuts, you've gotten to camp, now you've got to set up. I think what you'll find with this video is the UEV 440 is a really easy setup. I'm gonna do it in three ways. I'm gonna do the beds first, I'm gonna do the kitchen second, uh, sorry, I'm gonna do the awning second, I should say, and I'm gonna do the kitchen third. So that's gonna be the run through of what we're gonna do. I'll give you a bit of a disclaimer. I'm gonna do it by myself, without a helper. I'm not the rock, as you can see, I wish I was, but I'm not the rock. And um, so it's actually a really easy thing to do. First thing is, is that you've got to level the trailer. And what I've done to give a bit of an example in this case is you can see the trailer just with your naked eye is definitely dipping down on one side. So the first thing you do when you get to camp, this comes with airbags as standard. So what I'm going to do. I'm going to drop the airbag down. and I've dropped the trailer right down. What that does is a couple of things. One, leveling's easy, no chocks, no wheels. I usually put a little spirit level on top of the, um, the front bar, and, um, but also, even if you wanted to have it high, you can lower the trailer down for setup and then lift it up once you're actually set up, which makes it uh, reaching things a little bit easier. So the front bed is the first thing that we're gonna set up. It's just got two clips, so we'll start by unclipping it. One major benefit of the front bed in a uh, Conqueror 440 is the fact that it's a hard roof, okay? If you are worried about the weather, you can unzip the rain coat first, so you've got your rain cover, your tropical awning, but we're not gonna worry about that in this case. So up it goes on gas struts. Then I'm gonna flick out the next door. Remember, I'm doing it by myself, no helpers. And there comes your roof. So you can see that's the design of the 440 roof. And you've got a nice little handy clip here, which is designed to keep your canvas in when you're locking it up. So I'm gonna undo that as well, okay? Now, my next step is to pull the bed out. Now the bed comes right out on rollers really, really easily. And all we've got to do here, if you can see, we've got two zips. It literally is this easy. I've got to zip these into the top connectors here. Another great thing, if you are getting help, and it could be your, your son, could be your wife, could be whatever, you can pull this down so you can reach things nice and easily. In this case, I'm not gonna need to do that, okay? So the first one I'll do, I'll just put that zipper in there. Okay. Zipper number one, I'll bring that around. And all I'm gonna do is zip it right to the edge and then I'm gonna Velcro the side, okay? So that's zipper number one. Let's go to zipper number two. Same thing like any zipper, the hardest part is just the first little catch. Zipper number two, I come round. And there we go. And I Velcro him down. Okay. Now, the next part, just as simple. What we want to do now is secure the roof. So we just pop our little poles straight in. Bring your side down. Here's our next pole. Pop this one straight in there so the roof can't collapse. See, just click straight into the little ball joint. And then the final part of this is just to lock it inside with the bed, which I'll show you when we do the other bed at the same time. So let's go around. That's the first bed. So far, it's easy. I've got no sweat on my brow. I've done that very easily. Now let's talk about the second bed, which is on the side. Another great feature of a Conqueror, again, is a hard roof. So when this pops up, this is actually what the person in this bed is sleeping under. So all I do here is I pop it up. Gas struts take over and do most of the work. Side benefit, the base of the bed is actually white. So if you're ever bored and it's a rainy day and you've got your beautiful awning set up, pop your bed up and there's a whiteboard for the kids. Now, next thing we wanna do, bring our bed down. Easy as that. And we're gonna repeat. All we need to do here, we've got the same zips and the same zips. All I need to do is get this zipped up. 
Okay, so zip number one. And a little bit of Velcro on the side. Just make sure we secure that nice and easily. Okay, I'm gonna zoom across the other side now. I've got my second zip. Take that back to the beginning. Line it up. And there we go. So, like any zip, making sure it's got a clear way to go through. Okay. Velcro on the side. Pull that down. Okay. So there's the majority of the second bed. Now remembering, I'm only a couple of minutes in. I haven't had to use a shoulder or any force um, at the moment, which is certainly what I had to do in some other trailers. So I'm a couple of minutes in and my beds are nearly done. Okay, so to finish it off now, we're gonna just finish making the beds with the mattresses. Now the first bed on the side is already locked into place. So the mattress is just put on here for comfort. Okay, so there's mattress number one done. Now with your main bed at the front, what happens is this mattress actually stops it from rolling forward. So it becomes almost like your chock. It's really simple. All you simply do is lift it up and over. Pop it down, she's now locked into place. Because it wedges in behind here, that bed won't move forward. So come and I'll show you. So if we walk back around to the front bed now, that's locked into place. Next thing we wanna do, get our little Window awning going, nice and easy. There we go. And you've got the same for the windows on the side. So I'll show you how these work. They just pop in like so. Always make sure this is an adult's job. Obviously the spung steel is very, very high tension, but the benefit of having that little bit of cover over the windows can be absolutely fantastic. And now that's in. And there you go. So bed number one, done. Bed number two, done. If you're camping with a significant other half, while you start doing the awning, usually what happens in our routine, they'll start doing the beds and making the beds and getting it ready for, um, for you know, a nice drink when it's all done. So beds are done, let's move on to the awning. Come on. Awnings can be challenging and at the best of times, but I'm gonna show you how easy this is. Now, it's important to note as well, the awning is the same in the 440 and the 490. So if you're a 490 owner, you'll find it's exactly the same setup, which is great. Now to do the awning, there's a couple of things that I always grab out of my trusty box on the side. First thing is, always have my trusty step with me, a little bit vertically challenged, so I don't find that having to reach on tippy toes or climb on wheels is the best thing. So I've got my little step, and what I've also got here is I've got a couple of ratchets and I'm gonna show you why towards the end of this um, couple of minutes set up because the ratchet system can just save time if you're only setting up one awning, okay? So let's start. So the first thing we need to do with the awning is we need to get it out. Now, obviously you've got a nice big waterproof bag and you can just see by looking at the bag, the actual size of this awning which is gonna have massive benefits moving forward. Okay. So, okay. When we get up and underneath it, you can see here there's three clips. One, two, and three. Simple as that. You can almost see exactly how we've rolled it up and put it away. Now what we wanna do is we wanna bring the awning out. So we're gonna go across one side, and I'll walk all the way across here. Okay, now this is where I'm gonna use my first ratchet. The reason being is that these are batwing awnings, okay? 
Now the bat wing awnings are designed very, very cleverly to actually connect to each other, one on each side. That maintains the tension between the two and keeps them in place. Now what we're gonna do in this case, we're actually not gonna set up the second one, we're gonna set up one, which is what you'll do when you're camping. So what we do now, just to maintain the actual tension on this, is we've got a little ratchet. I'll pull the ratchet straight across and that's gonna give us a little bit of tension to start. Now let's go across the other side. So we're more than halfway through now. I'm gonna zoom across here. Okay. This, this pole here is for your cover that goes across between the two bat wing awnings. I'm not gonna set that cover up on this video, so I'm just gonna push that aside for a second, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this across. You can see here where the bat wing awnings connect together. I'm just gonna go and grab my other ratchet. Which is right here. Okay. In this case, I'm just gonna connect there. And I'll go straight on. And there we go. Residual benefit, somewhere to hang clothes, somewhere to hang anything you want. Okay, now, all the poles are actually inside the awning. So, I go one. Just gonna pop this one down for a minute. I'm not gonna yet put the tension on this one. Same as this one. And this is where I'm gonna grab my little stool. Haven't used it yet. I'm about to use my stool. Okay, another great feature of this awning here is that you actually have a couple of peaks. You can see there's a metal arm here and you've got a plastic protective cover over your canvas. So the wheel at the end of this is not gonna damage your canvas in any way. But you've got a couple of little locking pins here that you wanna push into place. So if I push that up, all right, there we go. So we've got our first peak. So we put our little locking pin in. Now remember I said, if I can do this, anyone can do this. This is a great example, I'll go from the other side. There we go, locking pin in. I'm gonna go to the next one. I'm gonna grab my locking pin. That's all it is there, as you can see. Just a little pin that goes through. Okay. Yep. Right, pull this aside. Push this up. Grab my little pin. Push it through. There we go. While I'm up here with my ladder, another great design. Because the bag's so big and the awning's so big, now this Velcro's up, so it stays out of the way. Get that up. All your electrics are all pre-wired in, so there's nothing to set up there. And I'm just gonna finalize my tension on my side rods. One and two. Now, I don't know many awnings that will be set up that quickly. There we go. So that's front beds, that's awnings. Now it's time to walk around the outside and just get the kitchen set up. Once the kitchen's set up, we're ready to sit down at our camp table, grab a camp chair and a nice cold beer. So I'm gonna zoom straight into the outside walk around now of the 440 and show you a few key things. Okay, so beds are done, awnings are done. I'm gonna talk just briefly around some features on the outside of the 440 as we set up our kitchen, pantry, and actually if we were out in a campsite now, we'd be getting close to having a nice cold drink. So first of all, at the front of the 440, you got your DO35 hitch, which is standard. Um, great Australian designed and made product, 360 degree articulation. It will actually make sure that this takes you and your trailer anywhere, okay? On the front of the uh, 440 here, you've got your gas uh, box. This one's got two nine kilo gas bottles in it at the moment. 
you can run a four kilo bottle, you can run a nine and a four, whatever you like. Or in some cases when we're camping, we just run one bottle and have extra storage, not that you need it in a 440. And then onto our main box here, we have a shovel that's mounted on the front. This shovel's had a bit of use. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but the shovel gets used all the time. And we also have an ax on the side as well, which you can lock into place too. So if you're going somewhere, you just put a little padlock on it and off you go. Inside here, we have our um, Vi Air air compressor. We've got our tent poles and we've got some tie down points just in case it gets very, very windy. I think the air compressor is really something to talk about because if you look at the quality of the equipment in this, in this trailer as standard, it's actually quite impressive, including if you ever wanted to go into a sandy area or if you had an issue with a tyre, you've got a full commercial grade Vi Air air compressor, eight litre tank that, um, that, that would actually pump up any tyres on yours or your colleague's car. And it's got, a, um, it's got a hose that will reach all the way to your vehicle and also your friend's vehicle as well. So I think you'll find if you do hit the sand, your friends will be following you because they know that you'll get it done in two seconds. Hot water system's in there as well. And my airbag controls. Airbags are standard, um, which means it's great. We've lowered, the, we've lowered the trailer right down. It's very comfortable to sit under. And um, most important thing to remember, lift them up when you're leaving. It helps with your auto leveling, helps with your four wheel driving, helps with the setup at camp. Really great feature. Okay, time to get the kitchen out. It's really easy. One of the greatest features about the 440 is how easy this kitchen is. There's a spring lock on the side. That stops it from moving around. Little grab handle, and let's pull it out. Remembering, you can also do this on the side of the road, right? So if you want to stop, you want to have a little bit of lunch, no problems at all. We have our little sink system that sets up on the side here. Now, let's talk about this area. What I'm going to do, actually, I'll turn this light on. There's a light switch at the back. If you've seen the 440 video, that I did on the inside, there's a light switch that actually lights this area up. Lighting is really, really important. So I'm gonna talk about this light, then I'm gonna talk about the awning lights in a minute. But this kitchen setup is, I think, one of the best features. You've got an 82 litre fridge freezer. Now this can be a fridge, fridge, freezer, freezer, fridge, freezer, whatever you like. It clips into place. You've got, um, you've got ample room and storage and baskets actually that pull out. So the actual fridge freezer is a really good system. The other thing which is great about it as well is the fact that it's got an aluminium top, so you can use it as a chopping board too if you needed to. Now we're on to our Dometic gas burner. I think the, um, the great thing, it's got your windshield at the front, but the best feature about this is that the actual gas pipe plugs straight into your trailer, which connects to your gas bottle. So you don't need to get your gas bottle out and try and fiddle around or pull it out of your gas bottle storage container and, and plug it in. It plugs straight into your trailer. That's a really, really good feature. Let's get onto the sinks. Now sinks are overlooked a lot. A lot of trailers have a single sink, and I can tell you the double sink is a great feature. These are plastic, which means that they won't, um, if you put something into them, they won't chip. Uh, they're also lightweight, and they've got little, um, little connectors in here that make sure that they don't actually slip off when they're full of, uh, full of dishes. Having two sinks, you can run one with hot soapy water because you run hot water here standard in the 440. You can run one with hot water, one you can dip in to rinse out. Um, in some cases, we put a... Um, a tea towel over the fridge as well, so that's going to be your drying rack, and then your tea towels hang beautifully straight over your top rack above you there. Um, if you are in a place where there's a camp kitchen, you can load these up, you can pull them out, you can take them with you to the camp kitchen, which is another massive benefit. And the other thing as well is remembering at home, sometimes a sink can get a bit of buildup of grime, and, um, and with these, you can take them out, give them a good wash around the side. If you have a big spaghetti bolognese cook up, and then you look around the edge of these, like anything, they're gonna be red. Take them out, give them a good clean, and, um, and then your, your kitchen's nice and clean. The other feature with this um, tap, which is great, is if the wind is coming across, you can put your side wall awnings on, but if you don't want to, you can take this right down into the sink there and you can turn it on, and then all of a sudden you've not got water blowing on you. So that's another great feature. We have a storage container on the side here, pots, pans. Um, sometimes we put our rubbish bin in there. And, uh, and the other point about this, which is excellent, 
is you've got all your serviceable items um, readily accessible. So if something's ever like you know in a trailer, if you're out somewhere and you want to, if you've got to repair an item, serviceability is really really important, especially if you're completely off the grid. And I think this lays well to the heritage of Conqueror is that everything that you may or may not need to touch is accessible, and I think that's a great feature too. But having pots and pan storage is a game changer. This door here. There's a little elastic strip on the side. Okay, again, we're thinking about the wind. All it does is simply click into place. Now that's not going to blow around. Um, we tend to put chopping boards and things in the side there as well. It's actually, you know, in a trailer, any extra storage is great storage. So now the pantry. And I can tell you without a doubt, this pantry is 100% the best in class pantry for a trailer. I can tell you that without any word of a doubt. So just imagine we've set up, beds are done, awnings are done, fridge is out, we open the pantry. In the pantry here, you've got all your separate divisions. Uh, I don't know if you know those storage containers, you can get those, um, the blue ones that we used to take camping and search for food. I can get three of those into this pantry, but what is the uh, unbelievable uh, advantage is you can actually see everything. So everything there is accessible. You've got a nice fold down table as well. Uh, if you're on the side of the road and you wanted to make sandwiches, piece of cake. You've probably seen one of our other videos, how we use this bar. Again, it's just a game changer. You can have all your drinks there, not a problem. You've got a full shelf at the top. And then you've got another table underneath here. So to think that there's another table, When you look at that, for a camper trailer of this size, to have this much room to work in is absolutely fantastic. Anyway, we keep moving around. The next feature, which is a really great feature too, is the in-awning lights. I'm gonna turn that light off now and show you why the in-awning lights are really important. Because now that we've had our strong light and we've done our cooking or done whatever we need to do, the in-awning lights are a really nice soft way to enjoy the ambience of a nice evening meal or evening drinks without having to constantly block your eyes and try and get out of the, the glare. These are standard and they're in both sides of the awning and they switch on and off from the side here. So all you simply do is turn them on and turn them off. So I think that's a wonderful feature of the 440 and it makes this area a lot more workable, okay? Moving around to finish off at the back, you've got your standard jerry cans, of course. I love how the high definition screen comes out here on a nice balmy night sometimes. We'll set up a couple of chairs for the kids. They watch a TV show or they watch something on their, um, their plug-in um, HDMI cable and they enjoy that. And then we have across here, this is where showering takes place in a 440. Okay, there's your shower cable. And this is your shower tent. Your shower tent simply opens straight up and you're straight into your shower tent. You can also put a porta potty in there as well. So if anyone wants to go to the loo, they've got nice uh, privacy. And of course the hot water is plumbed straight in to that as well. So it's a very um, convenient shower. So that probably gives you a very basic walk around of the 440, the kitchen and awning side. I think the final point, which is probably critical to mention in an outside walk around is the additional storage that's just around here. So if you follow me for a minute, this is the final area that I'm gonna finish up in. What you actually have here is more storage. These fit four canvas bags perfectly, straps up of course for when you're traveling and if you're going off road. Uh, the amount of uh, items you can fit in there, what we tend to do is label one each for the family. And on the side here, this is where we keep all the toiletries. And I can tell you, you can load that right to the brim like it is at the moment, and you can close it and it doesn't even touch the other bags. That was the one thing when we first saw, we thought, I wonder whether you can actually load that up. Well, you can. And the final piece of storage here on the side, this used to be for your poles before the poles were inbuilt and technology took over. But Conquer has left them there and, um, and they've said they're great for fishing rods. And I agree. Throw your fishing rods in there. Tonight they can be wet, they can be fishy, and they're not inside the back of your ute or the back of your trailer. So that finishes up the 440. I hope you enjoyed the walk around. And um, they are a real surprise packet. They're a very capable trailer, and I think they're great um, to be able to uh, enjoy them in the true off road. So see you again. See you next time. Thank you.